some amazing things about being a little bit older that actually translate into, you know, looking a little bit better or feeling better about yourself also. And I think that the longer we're around on this planet, most of us do become more accepting and forgiving of ourselves. And, um, you know, it's really all about enjoying life and enjoying the things that you appreciate about yourself, learning what those things are, and then really um, celebrating them, celebrating them on stage, celebrating them so that other people get a chance to be inspired by your own celebration of yourself, which I really do think that burlesque kind of allows women the opportunity to do that unabashedly, unashamedly, and just, you know, well, kind of, you know, in the raw. You know, I, I know that when you were working and you first began modeling, that your employer may not have fully embraced your professional aspiration. And so... yeah. That did happen. <laughs> that did happen. Even though they didn't know that I was modeling on the side for a couple of years, even though, you know, I was on wine bottles out of California, they, they had no idea. It wasn't something that I flaunted at work. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Sometimes people can be a little snotty about it once they find out, you know, that you're doing something like this, which, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. I think it evokes a whole lot of different emotions for people and, um, yeah, that was a, that was an interesting experience in my life. What were you going to ask me about it? Well, I mean, the thing that's beautiful about that is that you didn't let that stop you. And so no. the, the really the kind of a moral of the story and, and the reason I'm, I'm going down this particular line is that for a lot of us, I have that as a psychic. I was a corporate executive. I can't be a corporate executive probably and be the rock and roll psychic at the same time because there's a certain kind of stereotype of what, what fits into that bucket. So because you're able to now go back into that world and still maintain this high visibility for other women who are trying, who may have gone through what you went through once before, do you have any advice for them? I mean, this is really the reason I'm going down this path to, to how they can sort of stay in the TikTok, you know, nine to five kind of world and then be expansive enough to step out of that because there's so many artificial barriers that are set up in our lives as you know, creative artists in whatever capacity that may be. Do you have any yeah. advice for people that, that may be in that dilemma, whatever it is, they want to be a, you know, a juggler, they want to be whatever, and they feel like they can't because they feel like they you're not going to be accepted at work. They're not going to be accepted in the family or, you know, whatever. The black sheep thing is going to, it scares them. You're right. powerful. And you're a powerful woman. How do you, how do you, what would you say to those people? Well, what I would say to those people is to thine own self be true. And you really do have to, at some point in your life, decide what is it that really makes you tick and, you know, as long as it's not committing mass murders, as long as it's doing something that's, that's good, um, I think that you you have to realize that it's really important to have people around you who are supportive of your life um, and that understand, you know, this isn't some quirky thing that you're trying at some little point in your life that you're at the phase that you're going to be over. I mean, and it, it wasn't for me. I was always a little bit different, um, you know, as a kid, as, a, you know, in my college years, and um, and obviously, you know, it, it always kind of translated. I even had people when I was in my corporate job before I started modeling who, were, who would tell me, you know, you're just really different. You're just really different from everybody here. And if you're hearing that in your life, in your work, then it's probably true. <laughs> And what's important, I think, is to surround yourself with people who see that about you and appreciate it. So, you know, I think that most people, um, as long as you're doing something that is artistic and it is creative, even if it is considered a little risque, most people are going to be supportive of it and understand it. I think that the haters are going to hate. And by that, I mean, you know, if somebody wants you out of a job because you're too pretty, 
you know, that's eventually going to be against the law. There's There have been a lot of lawsuits about that in the past, I don't know, five years. I've been seeing a lot of that kind of thing happening. Um, but if your family, you know, is opposed to what you do, like, if, imagine that you wanted to be a rock and roller and your family didn't, you know, approve of it. I mean, on some level, there was that period of time where rock and roll was considered the devil's music, right? And... um you just have to decide to surround yourself with the people that are that are good for you, even if it means, you know, that you've got to cut some ties here and there. And unfortunately, that has been my experience in life. But the people that I have surrounded myself with for the last several years have been such amazing people. First of all, the fact that I was able to have people around me that were really supportive and encouraging, even when I very, very first got started in the modeling world of pinup, um, which, you know, we should talk a little bit about that because that's also, just like burlesque, it is a celebration of, you know, a more curvaceous woman who, you know, sometimes, you know, looks like that 1940s housewife from next door, but she can also look, you know, really sexy or sassy um, or just really all-American. Um, and and it's a varied type of appreciation of the different types of female beauty. Um, and I think that um, the more you're around people who elevate you and support you in that or whatever it is you want to do, be a rock and roll star or, you know, be a crocodile hunter or whatever it is that you want to do. And I think that everybody has some kind of dream within them somewhere. I knew a long time ago I um, was a dancer when I was a little kid and then I didn't really get to stay with it. And um, my family never really kind of had enough money to put us through, like, all of the types of learning we wanted to do that were, you know, going to cost money. And I always felt that, at, you know, some point in my life, I, I even said it out loud, I said, I think I really missed out in my life. Like, I should have been a dancer. I really should have been a dancer. And who would have guessed that a couple of years later, I would have an opportunity to become a burlesque dancer and to own my own troupe. This is the the second group that I've owned. I started with Millionaire Burlesque. Um, And then I was asked by Kitty Katrina to join forces with her and create a troupe together. And so we made Burlesque Off Broadway in Nashville. Um, And I've just been, been very blessed and very fortunate. But I did have to cut ties with some people. And while that can be kind of stressful, I don't think you have to entirely cut ties. Maybe you just have to not rely on those people for your emotional support and, you know, fulfillment, whether it's in, you know, the job world or in your family or whatever that support group might be. But now I've got an amazing group of people that not only have pushed me to where I am in my career, but it's allowed me the opportunity to give opportunities to other individuals, give them a chance to, one of the hardest things about Nashville right now, and I'm sure this used to be true of L.A. and maybe still is, is that, you know, an artist town, everybody wants to make it. And so many people are willing to give everything away for free, all of their art and their talent and their time. And and um, it's really hard for people sometimes to get paid, get published, get really acknowledged for the artistry that they have and that they need to showcase somewhere. And I feel like I've been able to at least open those doors for a bunch of people and create those opportunities. I mean, not only do I do things like burlesque and um, help people become models if they're interested in at least pursuing that on some level, but, um, you know, I've also helped a lot of bands get seen and showcased and get paid. Um, So it's been, it's been a, a worthwhile experience. And I, you know, have to say like you, you sometimes have to face these critics and just be okay with the fact that, you know, they're going to be not as supportive as you would have hoped or liked for them to have been. And that's okay. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to support you as long as you're doing what you want to be doing and it speaks to you. You live this life one time. You don't want to get to the end of it and think, what... I really should have been a dancer. I really should have done something. Why didn't I? And have those regrets. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I mean, one of the themes of the show and, and kind of the theme of the day and is about really looking at who you surround yourself with. I mean, it, you know, we ta- I talked about this with Karen in the first hour. And, uh, you know, it also comes down a lot to women not supporting other women in chat. And in some sense, they disempower other women and, and how to really find that, you know, kind of core tribe and how to to rise past that. We talked in the first hour a lot about young women, you know, in high school and, and what they go through. And you certainly see it, you know, in Nashville. And, you know, I mean, I, you and I talked about this. I'm not convinced, you know, for me, the rock and roll psyche, you got to get the devil, you know, twice, right? I get one from each food group. So, um, <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so, so when you look at this, with Burlesque Off Broadway, and you look at this process and and what you're doing, do you have any vision ever of maybe expanding this and taking this maybe beyond yeah, that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and, absolutely, and, I do. And so that yeah. process for you, Shannon, when you when you think about that, when you think about what this does for women, you, I, I want to kind of pick your brain a little bit with this one, man. You know, so. As someone who is able to, I mean, you have a, you have an energy. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. And and I think that energy drives a lot of the response that circles around you. And so sometimes people, and I have that in some sense in, in the psychic world, right? You have this, a lot of it's confidence. You know, when you feel confident, like, you know, nothing's going to slow you down, and no matter what, you can just jump into it. A lot of people don't have that, and so they like to soak up some of that. So part of what I see you doing, from my vantage point, the outside looking in, is helping people to find that sense of self-confidence because in one sense they can mirror what you have. So as you think about taking that potentially into... Uh, maybe a bigger venue or other venues. How do you how do you see that process working? You know, you know what does that look like for you? <clears throat> That's a good question. You know, um, and I've talked to a lot of different people about this. I mean, with me, <laughs> so uh, I, I am. That, a I mean, let me ask you this: is that, a, is that a fair question to ask? I mean, if not, it's, a, it's a fair question. It's a fair question to ask, and I think that it, there's so many layers to how to answer that question. And and but I think that um, I think that when you bring your true self fully and completely to an endeavor, then you're going to have that energy. You're going to just you know want to knock it out of the ballpark every single time. I mean, for example. Um, <laughs> In 2012, I won Nashville's Performance Artist of the Year. I did not expect that that was possible, that I could win doing what I was doing because, first of all, you know, I had competed against so many people during the course of a year here in Nashville at this one, um, like, artist exhibit. And <clears throat> there were so many performers. There were belly dance troops. There was this 30-person hip-hop group. I was like... Whoa, there's no way. When they nominated me and it came down to three of us having to perform against each other, I literally, Andrew, I was convinced there is no way in hell (laughs) that I'm going to win against these people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have fun with this for myself. I'm going to do a really fun, ridiculous routine that is just kind of the most over-the-top thing I've ever done. And I'm just going to challenge myself personally and I did that's exactly what I did and I still to this day cannot believe that that what that was the attitude that I needed to have I guess I mean I came at it from the wrong direction I came at it from like a defeatist oh there's no way but I really was inspired by these other performers I thought they were so great compared to me and there were they were multiple people I was one little individual you know bringing a coffin with me on stage, a pine box coffin with me on stage to dance to uh, Jace Everett's Do Bad Things. And and I didn't think that I could win this thing. Um, 
but you know, you, you, when you just decide 